working on a new, completely different ship than I've ever built before. It's a chaperone. It's a steamer a paddle wheel boat, and it's more massive than anything I've ever built before. It's rejuvenated me in shipbuilding, although I think most of you realize I love building ships, but it's completely different. I'm enjoying it. You can see here's the, uh, the very beginnings of the hull, the bones of the ship itself. And let me show you how I got to this point. Beginning with the manual, notice that this is all white, even the underside of the, uh, of the ship. But in my research, looking, the lower part of most, if not all, the steamboats were dark on the bottom. And then the white was up in this area. I also read that there's not a lot of knowledge on specific color schemes for the chaperone. Maybe all the pictures were black and white. So I'm not going to go with red doors. I am going to go with a dark maroon. I am going to use the white for most of the rest of it, but I'm considering staining the handrails maybe the entire uh, the, the little picket fence look. I may stain that, but the majority of the exterior walls will be white. Uh, there's some very helpful information if you read all of this, especially if you're uh, relatively new at um, model building. One thing I did not know and I learned is instead of soaking uh, planks in hot water, to bend them, you could also soak them in ammonia. Now, I, they said household ammonia because the, the ammonia I have is full strength and that, that you couldn't do. It just would burn your eyes and lungs and all kinds of things. So I may look into getting some homemade ammonia and try that. It says it, um, it softens the pores somehow. It'll dry quicker and they'll bend easier. So I may give that a try. It gives you an idea on some tools that you can use and painting and things like that. Then getting into the build, I really didn't have a whole lot of problems on the hull. Let me show you the, the first one that puzzled me for just a moment. I'm getting started and right off the bat, I think, oh my goodness, I'm completely lost. I can't find something. There is a support that goes in here that just helps hold these together when you glue them. And I was looking all over these sheets that have all the parts for the keel. I can't find it anywhere. I thought I looked at the sheets. I just did not look close enough. Here's the sheet that it's on. It's along with 35P. That's some of the, uh, the decking, it looks like. So there they are, B1 and B2. So uh, now I can continue. Some of these that I know will not show. I've just been writing on them what they are. B1, B2. B1, B2. All these cross members went into place easily. You could line them up with the drawing. Make sure you stay right. Uh, there's B1 and B2 where it caused me a bit, little difficulty right off the beginning. But this is going to be huge because it even sticks out further than this. I'm not even sure it's all in the camera, just barely, maybe. Let me scoot over a little bit. So with any ship, you do have some of the, wherever it starts to cut down, you're gonna need to, to file these or sand these. I've already done it on all of them. I will fine tune this as I get ready to put the planks on. So they're not exact necessarily, but I got a good start on it. tool that came in very handy. This is just a small square and I was able to make sure that I put all these in place and got them square. Start in the middle, work your way out on both ends. Allow it to dry a little bit in between. Then on this back portion, there are two supports that get glued together and then they attach. And again, you, you've got one of those dark lines where then you bevel that. Again, I pre-beveled it almost all the way, and then I'll do the rest, the final, by hand. So I think that's a pretty good start. 
The next step is going to put in some quarter inch stringers and I ran into a small issue here. Over here on this drawing, this stringer goes from five all the way back to and through 29. There's a notch for it, but it is about an inch short. So I have these available. You can pick them up at a, uh, a craft store or a lumber store. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple of those. They're inexpensive because I do want that to go all the way. I could split it and use two, but uh, I'd rather have it go all the way. And I know they come in three foot lengths. The stain I am using is semi-transparent red mahogany number 225 made by Minwax. This is my uh, drying table. So I'll just let them sit on there for a few minutes. You're not gonna be able to see it on the screen right away, I don't think. So let me get the camera in position and I'll show you how I stained those. What I use as a base is a sheet of aluminum foil. That's because it will not absorb the stain, so that works pretty well. I wish it would have made it a little bit longer. And I usually do five planks at a time. What I'm using is Minwax Dark Red Mahogany. It might just be Red Mahogany. Yeah, it's just red mahogany. It really doesn't have that much red pigment to it. It's mostly a dark brown. And I just rub it on. Then I set this over on those paper towels I showed a moment ago and just let that soak in a little bit. This is the last one I just did. And then I'll just, I'll start with a fresh paper towel. And I'll go to the one that I did very first. And I'll just lightly wipe it two times and then one time along the edge. Flip around two times and I get the edges. and transport these over to the drying table. Here's what I refer to as the drying table. It's all the uh, thinner wood planks that will go on the uh, ship above the water line, I guess would be a good way to, to state it. And I just love the way stain looks on wood, regardless of the quality of the wood. I think this is just white basswood and it still has a very uh, unique and attractive look to it. These are the larger wood planks that will go basically on the bottom of the, the ship uh, below the water line for the most part. I think you'll see some of them towards the front. We'll see. But again, I think it's just beautiful. That's it for part one. I've got the planks all stained and I'm ready to start putting them on the bones of the ship. This is Boiler Dan 1. Thanks for watching and following me along on my latest journey in model shipbuilding.